at some point, a guru is necessary. Uh, I would not say that a living teacher is necessary, and I would not say that the guru actually has to be what we usually think of as a guru, as some form, uh, uh, you know, even uh, divine or archetypal or whatnot. But uh, take the story of the Buddha's awakening. Uh, the Buddha sat under the Bodhi tree all night. He had a series of uh, visions, really. And then at, uh, at dawn, he had, he had seen everything that he needed to see that was preparing him for his teaching, the, the truth of the mechanism of samsara. And then uh, there he was, and that, there was no more to do. So he was at a place where he had exhausted uh, everything, particularly uh, taken into consideration his last six years of intense practices. And then he saw the morning star, and his mind opened up. Now, see, to me, the morning star is the guru. Something has to come from outside the way we normally think of inside and outside. You cannot uh, awaken completely on your own. It's not some, uh, the result of some effort or whatnot. So it's, it's this meeting of, the, of subject and object that uh, extinguishes, or, or, or I should say exposes, the illusion that there was a separation there to begin with. But so there's something, there's something that I would call a guru that is finally at the, uh, at the very end necessary.